Hey guys, welcome back. So Flesh and Blood finally released its print numbers for Monarch First Edition. And somebody asked what I thought about it. If you come onto the Flesh and Blood website, from any page you can hit Game and Collector Center. You'll drop onto this page. And then you can come down and click any of these banners for any set. And that'll take you to a bunch of interesting information about that set, including how many boxes were printed for various editions. Now, they haven't released unlimited print run numbers for any sets yet, even though Welcome to Wraith went out of print, I think, in December of 2021. And Arcane Rising went out of print actually earlier than that, I think in October of 2021. But you can see 16,700 boxes of Welcome to Wraith first edition is what they printed. When they originally released the number for Arcane Rising, everyone was shocked that it was the same number. And they had expected this print run to have been two, three times as high. Crucible of War, the third set, 37,500 boxes. So, you know, about two times as large. And so they released the Monarch number several days ago. 125,000 boxes. So this is seven and a half times as much as uh, Welcome to Wraith or Arcane Rising. It's three and a half times as much as Crucible of War. And what do I think about this? Uh, you know, when I first saw the number, I thought, seems fine. Um, you should expect that the game had grown in the time period between Arcane Rising and Monarch. Crucible of War is a little bit different because it's one of those smaller supplemental sets or an armory set, or whatever they call it. So, um, yeah, 125,000, it doesn't seem high. What would I thought would seem high? Uh, half a million. Half a million would have seemed like way too much, like just firing up the printing press with reckless abandon and printing to oblivion. What did the market think? Well, you know, the market's moved up about 10 bucks a box, so it was about 160 last week, and it's about 170 a box this week. Prices are just about the same on eBay. And so the market doesn't particularly seem faced by it. You know, I don't see Channel Fireball suddenly dumping thousands of boxes because they see that the print run is too high for their appetite. So it looks like uh, people can digest this and be okay with it. So I was thinking about it, and I thought, what does this look like in the timeline of Flesh and Blood releases? And so all the way over there on the left, way back in... The Innocent Times of 2019, we have Welcome to Wraith First Edition. Oh, man. And then uh, early 2020, Arcane Rising First Edition. You know, I bet this actually released on time. I bet this was their their actual target date. And then August, late August of 2020, Crucible of War First Edition. November of 2020, we got uh, Welcome to Wraith Unlimited and Arcane Rising Unlimited. And then we had this big gap. Now there's actually two big gaps here. There's a big gap between these unlimited releases and the Monarch First Edition at the beginning of May of 21. And there's a big gap between Crucible of War, which was the, the last set to be released, and Monarch. So um, I don't think this was originally planned, that Monarch would release this late, that you would have, uh, what's this, about a eight, nine month, delay between Crucible of War and Monarch. I don't think that was ever the intention. I think that was logistics and supply chain problems, cardboard shortages, all of these other things. You know, workers locked out because of lockdowns, things like that. So um, you have to consider that by the time they got around to actually putting Monarch first edition on the printing press, they would have had a lot of data from these unlimited runs, from the previous three set releases and they would have had a really good idea of what the print run should have been and keep in mind to some degree there there can be flexibility that you say hey uh, I want a hundred thousand boxes and by the time they get you onto the press you know maybe you can bump that up to 125,000 without much effort because maybe you just need to run the presses for a day or two longer you know, it just depends on what kind of congestion in the print shop there is. So um, I would suspect that the 125,000 boxes of Monarch First Edition was a very carefully chosen number by Legend Story Studios. I'm not concerned about it. I don't think it's wildly high. 
And no, none of us ever expected that it would be low enough that Monarch would go to $4,000 next year. Uh, Monarch to $400 in the next year? Yeah, maybe. I don't know. But I think long term, it's going to outperform the average Magic or Flesh and Blood set. Um, I don't think it'll perform like Welcome to Wraith 1st Edition, but I also don't think it'll perform badly. I think it's still early enough in the life cycle of Flesh and Blood that it'll be a sought-after product, and it was a good expansion, and people like it. So contrary to popular belief, Flesh and Blood is not dead, it's not dying, it's not going away, it's not teetering on the brink, and any day now it might fold. It's here to stay, and like I've said in the past, it's a question of whether or not Flesh and Blood going forward long-term is a 5% market share game, 8% 8% market share game, 10% market share game. I think it'll always be somewhere around there. It would be really hard for them to ever break into the top tier with, you know, Magic and Pokemon and maybe Yu-Gi-Oh. So, uh, 125,000 boxes, yeah, doesn't really bother me. Doesn't seem to have bothered the market. I think you can still buy at 170 today. I think this price is too low. Uh, I may or may not not buy another box of this this month. I don't know yet. I'm waiting for new Capenna to come out and see what kind of uh, prices on collector boxes I can get for that. So we'll see. Let me know what you think. If you agree, disagree, like, comment, share, and subscribe. Join me on Final Trade. Thanks a lot.